when I was going, when I was a child, my father spent a, a fair amount of time with me, teaching me about things. It wasn't primarily mathematics, but other sciences and uh, chemistry, especially, because his father had wanted him to be a chemist, and that hadn't worked, and it didn't work with me either. But but um, he outfitted me with a fairly elaborate chemistry outfit, which he got partly through a student who had transferred into mathematics from from um, chemistry and was his graduate student, became a mathematician. Yeah, and uh, so, but, and then, so I, I knew when I was in high school, I, I realized I was gonna do some sort of science and I got to college and uh, in college, uh, well, physics I couldn't stand it after a year. I, there was an optics lab and I couldn't see anything. And, and then chemistry, which I'd started out with, I broke too many, too many pieces of glass into my hands. And, uh, and I guess I just lost interest. So that left mathematics and biology, and I never really made a decision. Um, I, th I actually switched, decided to major in mathematics because I figured it was at the theoretical end of the science spectrum, so it would be easier to change out of, which is a stupid thing. And I got to graduate school and, and uh, still hadn't really decided to be serious about it. But, but my advisor, Oskar Zerski, was very inspiring. And after a couple of years, I got sucked in. And, and um, then uh, I did nothing but mathematics for 20 years. And so, uh, but I realized, you know, that, that um, Mathematicians were washed up at 30, so I had this plan that I was going to switch to biology at age 30. I probably should have done it, but uh, it was too late. I don't know. I mean, I suppose it was, it, I, if it was for um, one thing, it probably would have been for approximation theorem and, and consequences to a applications to, to uh, representing functors and moduli problems. But um, I'm, not, I'm not sure what the citation was. I don't remember. <laughs> but the, the nicest thing about going was that I got VIP treatment in, at Ben Gurion Airport, which meant that I didn't have to, <laughs> didn't have to go through the horrible lines. I got whisked right through and, and off, off we went. Well, he, he told me that uh, yesterday that he had been in my uh, class course I gave it at, uh, at GC uh, in, uh, uh, a long time ago. But um, basically it was because they, I, I don't know, I was invited to come. It was called art and approximation. It makes me feel old. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, you know, I had, I had a certain number. You, had, you, have a, you hope to have a few in your life, and I had, had a few. Um, with the approximation theorem, I, I remember that, that uh, I had proved something about the Picard variety representing Picard functor um, and wrote to Grotendieck about it. And he, told, he wrote back and said that Raynaud had done all this and much more besides. And this irritated me. <laughs> and then I went to the library and, uh, and uh, found the approximation theorem. <laughs> that, that's the way that happened. But was it a eureka moment? I'm not sure. It was irritation. I don't know. No, I've had a lot of times when I've been happy. My first, well, I suppose when I proved that etal cohomology gave the same answers as classical cohomology, that was a, a, a good moment. Was it a eureka moment? I'm not sure. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> yeah, I haven't had the last one yet. <laughs>